Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. This is for the October Snacku box. Um, another one of these situations where unfortunately I didn't get to it as soon as I got it. I've had it for a few weeks, honestly, because October has been nuts for me. If people don't know, if you only watch these videos from me, I actually do a bunch of movie reviews focusing on horror movie reviews. So October's been nuts for me doing all these. So sorry this is later than usual, but life happens. So here it is. And actually I'm doing it on Halloween evening um, before I'm going to be giving out candy. And part of the reason I'm doing this right now is so I have these snacks which aren't as bad as straight up candy for you. So I will eat the rest of these instead of eating the candy I should be giving to the kids. So just saying. So the um, focus for this one, I believe, is just kind of straight up fall. Cool picture as usual. And I'll let you read if you want to read that. Just pause on it because I'm not going to read the whole thing. So then we have our featured snacks, which are going to be fall based. And then we have our popular snacks, which could be kind of anything. There's one thing in particular in here that has been in here before. I think it was in last year's fall one as well that I'm pretty excited about. And I know my wife is excited about as well because she's she's a fan of it She when she had it last time. Got my trusty water. Sorry, when I pick it up and put it down, it'll make the camera jiggle. But All right, so I'll save that one. Okay, let's do this one first. This looks like it's... Okay, this is one of the featured snacks. This is Curry, Sen Curry Senbai, K-U-R-I. A tiny snack shop near Mount Fuji has been making this Senbai rice cracker for hundreds of years. It's made by using a clay oven to bake a mixture of egg, sweet white bean paste, local chestnuts, and water from the crystal clear Fuji River. I'm not sure the water is going to have much of a flavor effect on this, but you know. Uh, what's this is Senbai? Oh, so it's like two. Oh, I didn't show you like the packaging. There's the packaging. And if you want to see the back, um, it's like they're like really, really burnt looking. I mean, not like not necessarily like burnt, but they're just like super dark, almost burnt. They smell. They smell kind of fishy. Oddly enough, like it looks like it should be like a cookie, but it smells kind of fishy. And when I'm feeling it, it's a little sticky on the outside. That's really hard. I like really, really pretty hard. Mm. There is a little fishy flavor to it, but it's also very sweet. It's pretty sugary. I mean, it's kind of like a sweet cracker that's like super dense. Mm. It's a little potato-y tasting too, like because it's very starchy. Kind of has that kind of grainy potato. I'll go one more here. The chestnut, the red bean paste coming together. That's kind of what's giving it that potatoiness. I don't really like it, to be honest. I'm not a big fan of that one. Chestnut, a lot of the times, just does not click for me. I'm definitely need to rinse. Rinse my freaking mouth out. I don't like that one. Not a fan. Okay, moving on. Let's do, that was from the featured side. Let's do something from the popular snack side. Manja Yaki Senbai. Oh, another Senbai. I just randomly, randomly grab it. Rice crackers that take taste like Manja Yaki, a popular summer festival food that is made using Japanese hot plates. I don't know. Okay. There you go. Don't really know what to expect because I don't know manja yaki. What that is. So, okay. I mean, it looks like a senbai. Ooh. Oh, wow. It's got a real kick to the nose. It smells like a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy. See, it's like, like kind of looks like, you know, cayenne pepper or something. Mmm, it's a little soy, so it's a little tart, it's a little spicy, a little sweet, a little barbecue. It smells a little like barbecue sauce-y. It actually smells really good. So, I kind of like barbecue saucy smell. Comes off a little bit more 
ketchupy, which I know ketchup is used a lot of times to make barbecue sauce, but it's more on the ketchupy side than anything else really being added to it. It's not bad. It's just not as good as the smell, to be honest. Nice crunch to it. There's a little bit of a smokiness to it, though. That I like. Relatively salty. Totally fine with that. I don't love it. I would like it more if it... Well, that second bite was better because I had more of the seasoning on it. I would like it more if there was even more seasoning to it. And if it tasted exactly like it smelled. Not bad, though. I don't dislike it. I liked it. I just wanted to like it even more based on the smell. Okay, next. These look weird. We'll pick just one of them because there's two different types. This is from the popular side, too. Vegetable Yasai Boro. Two types of soft wheat cracker balls, spinach and pumpkin. They're filled with tons of healthy beta carotene and calcium. Okay, so I have one of each. I have spinach and I have pumpkin. I'm not going to eat the spinach because I'm assuming the spinach is probably just going to give it like a vegetable flavor. I'm more interested to see what the pumpkin will do to this. So let's do that one. Plus, if it's good, I think my wife would be interested in it. These Sometimes these things are hard to... Oh, okay. Well, oh, right there. I was going to say sometimes they're hard to open, but I just wasn't trying to open it in the right spot. See, so yeah, it's just like a little... Kind of like a oyster cracker. I don't smell anything. I don't smell anything. It's a little grainy. I, I, I mean, I can taste the pumpkin. It's a little bit sweet after that, too. It's, it's like really fine grain. When you chew it up and it gets mixed with your saliva... So it becomes kind of like, if you just put like granulated sugar in your mouth, just like the really fine sugar, you just put that in your mouth, like it's that type of texture. I don't like that texture at all. Um, yeah, I don't like this because I don't like that texture. The pumpkin flavor is okay. It's very, very low. It's just kind of like a little bit of pumpkin, a little bit sweet. Maybe the spinach is better. I don't know. That doesn't sound good though. <laughs> doesn't sound good. Sorry. Mm. Okay. Definitely got to rinse after that. Not doing so well right now. Another random one. Let's see what we got here. This would be... I feel like they do this all the time. Uh, Tenohira Iridori. An assortment of autumn exclusive mini rice crackers. There are eight types of crackers in each pouch. Soy glaze, nori seaweed, sea salt, laver seaweed... Dried baby shrimp, dried kelp, roasted soybean, maple sugar, and red maple sesame. Let us know which one's your favorite. Well, I don't really interact with you, so. Yeah, so they, I feel like they do this. Let me get the, yeah, whatever. It's good enough. Um, I feel like they do this in like every single box, pretty much. They have one of these send by assortment, uh, like, things. It's like a little tray. Oop. Dropped one. I'll pick it up. Oh, it looks like a ginkgo biloba. Or that's the kelp. I don't know. But you can see there's like a bunch of different... If you can see that, alright. This one smells a little sweet. Oh! Yeah. I like that. That one's good. That one's good. It's salty. It's just, you have a lot of, the, like, the rice flavor of the rice cracker, and then it's kind of salty. Pretty straight-up flavor, but oh, I like that. This is probably the shrimp one, because there's a little reddish flex. It smells kind of sweet. It smells sugary. Mm. Yep. A little shrimp to it. It's not super heavy, though. Like, some of these senbais that are, like, shrimp flavor are, like, really fishy. This is not. It's very, very light on the fishiness, but you can taste the shrimp to it, and it's salty, and it's crunchy, and you can taste the rice. It's good. That's a good one. Well, I'm going to save that one for last. I love those, typically. 
I've had this one a few times before. I what's this supposed to be? Oh, this is soybean. There's you can see there's like actual soybeans in there. Actually, let me turn this around for you. It's a better example. So you can see the soybean in there. So this one smells about the same. A little salty, a little sweet. Yeah. But the soybean has like a little bit of like a toasted flavor to it. It brings it a cracker. So it's kind of like the other crackers, like the, the, the first one that was kind of, you know, just like salty and rice. But it has added to it that kind of roasty soy. It's good. Mm. Don't like nori. I'm not a seaweed person. Although, I'm not getting a lot of smell off the seaweed. Hmm. Okay. So that seaweed in particular, like sometimes when I have seaweed, it's like really, really oceanic and like really fishy. That one is very low level. Probably the lowest level I've ever had. That's crazy. It's actually pretty solid. What's this one? This one? Oh, this is probably dried kelp. You can see all the pieces in there. Probably dried kelp. Okay. That one is also kind of fishy. Ocean-y. But it's pretty low. Low level. More tastes like veggie. Like you can, you know, like an... If you have, like, spinach, like, it tastes kind of irony. You know what I mean? It's a little bit like that. Or like a kale. Which, you know, I don't want that. It's not offensive to me, though. It's fine. What would this one be? Um, I don't... Oh, this might be just another type of seaweed one. Or this is the kelp. And that one, last one I had was another seaweed. Mm, that one tastes like sugared corn. You know, like canned corn, how that tastes? Like sweet canned corn. It's like cream of corn, basically. Oh, I got. No, thank you. No, thanks. Yeah. I'm going to try this one. I think this is the, this is probably the maple sugar, or maple sesame. This is probably maple sesame. Oh, duh. Cause it's kind of like maple leaf. Oh, I smell the maple coming off of it. Oh, mmm. It's got a really nice um, maple sugary zing up front. It kind of like tapers off, but no, oh, it hits you up front. It makes it more of like a mix between like a senbai and like a cookie. Well, that's good. And then this one. Which is probably, I don't know. This one might also be. It smells sweet and salty and soy. No, that one's also maple. Oh, yeah, because there were two maple ones. There was a maple sugar and the red maple sesame. So the red maple sesame I had, and then this one's the maple sugar. You do taste the maple sweetness. That's good. I actually, it has a really nice um, saltiness to it to kind of balance the maple sweetness out. That one, I think that one was my favorite, actually. That was good. I never really expected I was going to go through all those, but I did. Okay. We rebounded a little bit after having a really disappointing start. Okay, next. This might be disappointing. I don't know. Depends. Okay, so this is another one from the featured snack side. This is... Red Chestnut Pomu, an exclusive snack from a local snack maker in Matsuyama Prefecture. The snack maker has been making these bite-sized treats since 1948, using locally sourced red chestnut paste and wrapping them in a wafer shell that is then gently baked for 12 hours. These are a perfect afternoon snack. I'm not big on the chestnut. I have a feeling I'm not really going to dig this for that reason, so... You never know, though. You you really, you just never know. Oh, crap. Am I able to get this open? Wait, is there a, sometimes there's, ah, that's the weak spot. They usually have, like, one little 
intentionally weak spot where you can kind of peel it back. Ah, God, this is already looking like I don't want it. So I've had things kind of like this before. I'm gonna need to open it over here. Okay, and the little silica packet. Sorry guys, it's taking a while. There we go, got it. Yeah, I've had a few things like this before. It's just kind of like, it's like real doughy on the outside. Looks really yellow. A little greenish in that light. Okay. It just smells like starchy and a little sweet. I mean, consistency. I mean, it looks like chicken thigh, but the consistency is like a potato. It's like real grainy. I mean, it's kind of just starchy and, and, and a bit sweet. I don't dislike it, to be honest. But I don't particularly like it either. There's like a little bit of a kind of vanilla hint to it. It's actually grown on me a little bit. That's not bad. I was expecting to really not like that. That's actually okay. I'm alright with that. Especially based on my expectation of it. Alright. Oh man, let's save that for now. Let's go with this. What is this? This is from the... What is this? What is this? This isn't even on the list. Oh no, it is. It's just the packaging's not shown. This is chocolate flakes. And it looks like cereal, to be honest. It looks like Cocoa Pebbles is what it is, basically. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Chocolate-covered cornflakes, which are super popular among J Japanese of all ages. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Kind of weird. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a like a cornflake that's chocolatey. It smells like chocolate. It smells like cocoa pebbles. A little bit soft. Like it's actually coated in chocolate. Yeah. It's actually pretty solid. And it's like a, it's not super sweet though, too. Like you get the flavor of chocolate, but it's not crazy sugary and sweet like in the US. I, don't, I don't like that. That's a good way to get like the taste of chocolate without getting feeling like you're getting a sugar buzz immediately from all the sugariness, sweetness to it. So yeah, it's kind of cool. I dig it. It's not bad. All right, moving on. Let's do okay. It's uh, some crazier things at the end. This is also from the popular snack side. Pumpkin Sable, a light pumpkin infused wheat cookie that's shaped like a waffle. Because why not? We'll do that. Oh, yeah. It smells really cookie y. Smells pretty sweet. Toasty. I don't know if I. Oh, I smell the wheat, actually. I definitely smell the wheat aspect. I don't really smell the pumpkin, though. Hmm. It's got a nice bit of a crunch to it. Oh. Hmm. See, I definitely taste the wheat. I guess I'm getting, like, a slight bit of the pumpkin coming through, but it's not very pumpkin-y. I'll have to see what my wife thinks about this. I like the consistency of it. It's like a nice, dense, but flaky cookie. And there is like a nice kind of like toasted flavor on there. I like that. That's good. That's one of the better items here. I'm down with it. Now. Oh, I think I've had one of these before. Okay. This next thing. Um, Fugitsudo Chestnut. We've had something like this in the box before. Kobe Fugatsudo is one of the most famous pr premium jack Japanese snack makers and has been making Japanese snacks for over 120 years in the cosmopolitan city of Kobe. The seasonal bushis or bouchers are made with a pillowy chestnut-infused puff pastry sandwiching honey chestnut cream filling. The snack maker describes these bushi buns as a masterpiece of sweets flavor born in Kobe. We couldn't agree more. Yeah, so... I think I've had this, 
I was gonna say I think I've had it two different times, but I think the only one I can like clearly remember is one, and that was it was like a strawberry version of this back in February for their Valentine's Day uh, box. It was yeah, it was like strawberry filling with like apple added to it, and it was pretty good. Yeah, it's kind of like a moon pie a bit. It's like the outside's like really soft, and you see that cream on the inside. It smells sweet. It smells like a liquor. It smells like some sort of liquor. I don't know why. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It totally tastes like there's booze in there. Yeah, it's like some sort of like fruit liqueur. And don't get me wrong, it actually tastes good. I mean, there is like a little bit of an apple-y flavor to it too. I like it. I mean, it's sweet. It's not too sweet. Like I said, I'm sorry that that filling looks like crazy white. <laughs> it's like overexposed. Um. Yeah, it's good. I like how soft it is. Your teeth just go right through it. No problem. Kind of starts falling apart in your mouth in a good way. Yeah, that's pretty solid. And once again, one of those things where, like, in Japan, it's sweet, but it's not, like, sickly sweet. Like, it's, you know, co or uh, its equivalence in the United States would be. It would just be, like, nasty, sickly sweet. Yeah. Okay. So there's two more items. One's a hard candy. So, you know, we always do the hard candies last. So, this item is the item I was excited about because we had this last time, and it was really good. This is Pumpkin Rusk. For people who don't know, I mean, you can kind of see it. Like, Rusk is basically, like, baguette that's, like, baked twice, and it usually has, like, sugar on it. And it's, like, really crispy and buttery. Yeah. Located deep within the mountains of Yamagata, the Sebel Wheat workshop has continued to make some of the highest quality snacks in japan for over 20 years these seasonal pumpkin rusks twice baked baguette it says are glazed with pumpkin infused butter topped with pumpkin seeds and baked in a clay oven yeah like i said i i'm pretty sure we had this exact same snack at the same time last year and it was phenomenal so i'm excited to get into this sorry open this over here See. Rolling these dice. Ooh. Oh gosh. It smells so buttery. I smell the pumpkin actually. It's not super strong. It smells so buttery, a little sweet, sugary. Oh god, it looks so good. And bread. Like you can smell the toasted bread. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like the sugar on it, because there are, like, granules of sugar, if you can see. Yeah. It's kind of like light cinnamon sugar. Mm. It's really good. Like, it's super crunchy because it's twice baked. But then as soon as you bite into it and your saliva starts mixing with it, it just becomes, like, really soft, which is really weird but really great. It is so buttery. I think that's why it starts becoming so soft so quick because it tastes like it's just like soaked in butter that like they had the bread sitting there just like absorbing like melted butter and it's it's pretty awesome. God, I look forward to eating more of that later and I have an additional one. That is awesome. As I expected, that is hands down the best thing in this box. That is amazing. I love that. I want more rusk. I want more types of rusk. Oh, if Snacku did an entire box of just different types of rusk, that's like with me. Like if they did one, it was like all senbai, awesome. If they did one all rusk, that would also be awesome. Sweet. Okay, so let's move on to the last one. Uh, bubble tea candy. All right, let's see if this is any good. So those little hard candies. That's on the... Um, popular snack side of things 
Taiwanese bubble tea is a global sensation, and it's especially popular in Japan. These candies just like black tape. Oh, some words out. These candies, I assume, taste like black bubble milk tea. I don't think I've had the black bubble milk tea. I've had some of the tea, some of the bubble teas before, and my niece actually is a huge bubble tea fan. She loves it. Except when she gets a flavor she's not a big fan of. Alright, so it kind of looks like a Werther's Original, like a like one of those types of hard caramel candies or toffee. Ooh, definitely smells like tea and milk. That's interesting. It's like milk, black tea, and like a little caramel. You, yeah, the tea flavor is very strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to sit here and eat the whole thing right now, but um, it is what it is advertising. So if you like the sound of that, of like milk black tea, that's what it tastes like. Milk and black tea, basically. I like it. I actually like it. I was expecting I wouldn't really dig that, but I kind of like that. It's different. It's good. Okay, cool. So that's actually it. Um, Yeah, like I said, uh, this one's pretty good. I quite enjoy that one. The... uh pumpkin sable and obviously that pumpkin rusk was amazing but oh and the fugitsudo chestnut which was this one um those are my favorites everything else i was like eh. oh and the the little assorted senbais was pretty cool was pretty good as usual but those are my favorites um once again awesome snacku i don't you know they don't pay me or anything i'm not affiliated i don't get anything for doing this i just do it for fun so hopefully people get entertainment out of this. Uh, we'll have to see what comes next month, and uh, hopefully it's something really cool. Oh, crap. No, I think I know what it is. I think it's tea, actually. I think it's like matcha and like teas and stuff like that. So I'm not very excited about the November one. Boo. Anyway, I might be surprised, though. We'll see. Anyway, thanks, everyone, for checking this out. Put some comments down here if you like any of the videos I do, this or other ones. Hit that subscribe button. can help me out a lot. But thank you so much, and until next time, keep it brutal.